Hello everyone, welcome to the 8th lecture of Reinforcement Concrete. This is your civil girl and in this video we are going to see about working stress method. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. We already saw the basics of working stress method in the previous video where we saw the difference between working stress method and limit state method. Working stress method, the basic difference is that there is no factor of safety for loads. We just take the working loads into account. And the factor of safety is applied only for the materials. As in for concrete, it is 3 and for steel, it is taken as 1.8. And let us look into the assumptions that are made in working stress method. So the assumptions made are the first one is the plane section remains plane even after bending. So this is the most famous assumption that we can see in almost every theory. So what this means is that this assumption is all about strain compatibility. So what the strain compatibility means is at the level of steel in a concrete structure, we have a beam means we'll have steel here, right? So at this level of steel, the strain in concrete is equal to the strain in steel. So this is meaning behind plane sections remain plane even after bending. The second assumption is all tensile stresses are taken up by reinforcement and none by the concrete except as otherwise if permitted. Next is the stress strain relationship is linear. This we saw already right in the previous video. Say this is my beam. Please forgive me for this stupid drawing. So this is my section and this is my level of steel. So my stress diagram is going to be, I say this is my neutral axis. My stress profile is going to be linear. Whereas in limit state method, it was something like this. There was no stress diagram below the neutral axis, neutral axis. And also there was a parabolic profile here and a constant profile here. So in working stress method, the stress profile is going to be linear. Modular ratio, we already saw the importance of modular ratio. And modular ratio is equal to 280 divided by 3 sigma CBC. So, working stress method is not widely used nowadays. It is used only for miscellaneous calculations and tedious calculations like uh, for chimneys, water tanks, um, silos, etc. It was used in bridge construction, but the recent code has revised and in recent code they are using limit state method only. So, coming to modular ratio again, modular ratio is uh, the ratio of modulus of elasticity of steel to that of concrete. It is equal to 280 divided by 3 sigma CBC, where sigma CBC is the permissible compressive stress. So, the another use of modular ratio is, with the help of modular ratio, we can find the stress of steel and concrete. So, using this relation, we can find the stress of uh, steel or concrete. The relation is, stress at steel is equal to modular ratio times stress at concrete. So this is applicable only at the level of steel. See, we are using strain compatibility here. Our first assumption that the plane section remains plane even after pending. So in this video, we'll be seeing about the permissible stresses and these permissible stresses, if wind, earthquake, temperature and shrinkage effects individually are together or acting on a structure, then I know wind and earthquake, they don't act simultaneously. But if the other things are acting together or acting alone, then we will increase the permissible stresses by 33.33 percentage. In IS code, they say this as 33.1 by 3 percent, which is 33.33 percentage. So our new permissible stresses in these new conditions will be 1.33 times the old permissible stress. 33 means 33 percent is increasing it by 33 percent 1.33. So let us look into the permissible stresses now. In table 21 of IS 456 uh, we can see the permissible stresses in concrete. There are uh, different permissible stresses given for grade of concretes from M10 to M50. And firstly, permissible stresses in compression. Let us come to that. So, permissible stresses in compression, it is divided into two categories, bending and direct. So, before we go into this, I would like to say that uh, these questions, that is the questions on permissible stresses in concrete, they haven't been asked much in GATE, but they have been asked in other exams uh, where uh, theoretical questions are asked mostly, like SSC, JE or state PSU exams, even in interviews and technical aptitudes. So, in GATE, they haven't asked much, but... Uh, in the recent years, we may expect questions from here and I also have a problem type that you can expect and that has been asked uh, already in GATE. 
but it was asked in, as per the previous code so i have got the question for you so stay tuned so going into the table again we have bending and direct uh, permissible stresses in compression so uh, you don't need to mug up the values there is a trick for you to remember all these things so for m10 if you take it uh, the bending stress can be found out by you know m10 right divide 10 by 3 it is 3.33 if you approximate it it becomes 3 so uh, the same is applicable for all the mixed designs for m15 if you divide it by 3 you will get 5 and same for all the designs you can try it and see it will be like that because the factor of safety for permissible stresses in compression in bending is 3 so if you divide it by that factor of safety you can get the permissible stress now that we have seen what is for bending next is for direct compression so for direct compression the factor of safety is 4 so we have to divide the grade of concrete by 4 so divide 10 by 4 you'll get 2.5 divide 15 by 4 it will be uh, 16 by 4 is 4 so 15 by 4 is near to 4 so i'll take it as 4 and 20 by 4 is 5 so from that you can find the permissible stresses for permissible stresses of concrete in direct compression now coming to the permissible stress in bond that is the average stress for the plane bars in tension so before that i would like to say why the factor of safety in bending uh, is lesser than the factor of safety in direct tension. So let us look into this. This is my concrete structure and this is also my concrete structure. If there is going to be direct compression then this direct compression is going to act throughout the edge of my member. Throughout the member it is going to act. Now this is direct compression. Now if we look at bending the stress profile will not be uniform. It will be something like this. A K profile, they say. We would have seen this in fluid mechanics. So, in bending, my profile is going to be something like this. So, you can see that almost every point is loaded here. Whereas, in this case, the intensity also varies. And also, this point, it doesn't even have any load acting on it. It is almost zero. So, that is the reason why bending has less a factor of safety that is 3 and direct compression it has high factor of safety that is 4. Now coming to the permissible stresses in bond for plane bars in tension uh, we can see that uh, there isn't any specific relationship uh, like uh, the permissible stresses in compression but there is a factor of safety applied here. The factor of safety is like from 35 to 45 so since it is not that much reliable, not many questions have been asked from this part. You can keep it in mind if you want. And if we come to the uh, bottom of this table, we can see that in the second point of the notes, we can see that the bond stress is given in column 4. That is the average bond stress. It can be increased by 25% for bars in compression. We saw it for tension. So if it is for compression, we can increase the permissible stresses by 25% because this is the permissible stress in concrete. Concrete can obviously take more uh, compressive stress. Now let us go to the next table. Here the permissible stresses are for the steel reinforcement. So here also we have uh, two main divisions for mild steel bars and for high yield strength deformed bars that is our HYST bars and medium tensile steel bars. These medium tensile steel bars, they aren't uh, used much nowadays therefore we are not going to see about them so for tension up to 20 mm bars and including 20 mm bars if we are using a mild steel bar the permissible stress is 140 and if we are using a high yield strength bar the permissible stress is 230 this can be uh, got simply by we know the factor of safety right for steel is 1.8 so for 250 we are just going to divide it by 1.8 it will come nearly to 140 and if we divide 415 by 1.8, it will come nearly to 230. So this is how these things have been arrived. And for over 20 mm, since the diameter of the bar is increasing, the permissible stresses are reduced. That is, the permissible stresses are now 130 for mild steel bars and high yield strength bars. It, it, it remains the same. It is 230. So the reason why... Uh, as the diameter increases, the permissible stresses are decreased is because... Um, say this is my section and I have a small diameter bar and in the other section I have a large diameter bar so the surface area of this bar is less whereas for this it is high if say this bar fails then the area of concrete that can resist is more 
Say this bar fails, the area of concrete to resist the same force is less since steel takes up more area. So that is the reason why as the uh, size of the bar increases, we are allowing less permissible stresses. There are other reasons also, but that's let's look into it in another video. So coming to the table again, the compression in, for compression in column bars, it is 113 mile steel bars and 190 for high yield strength bars. So uh, coming to the third point, the compression in bars in the beam or slab when the compressive resistance of the concrete is taken into account. So now they are taking the uh, compressive resistance of both the bar and concrete into account. In this case, then our uh, sigma SC, that is the second point, the compression in column, that thing, it can be multiplied by 1.5, which means that can be increased by 50%. Now coming to the fourth uh, point, where the compression uh, resistance of concrete is not taken into account. In this case, again, we are looking at the diameter of the bars. The, so if it is above, it is up to and including 20 mm, it is 140. And if it is over 20 mm, it is 130. Same like in tension for uh, Fe250 bars. And coming to HYST bars, it is 190 again. So now that we have seen all the permissible stresses, let us look into that one problem which I talked about. So this problem was asked in gate before IS 456-2000 was published. It was according to the old code, what is the permissible compressive stress for an RC water tank, water tank wall made of M30 concrete in bending? So they haven't mentioned working stress method here at all. So how will we find it is uh, used for working stress method? Because they have mentioned water tank. In water tank, we use working stress method. What are all the other places we use working stress method? Firstly, it's water tank. All types of water tank, overhead, underground, on the ground, everything. Next, chimneys. Sorry. Silos. That's it. So these are the places where we, we where we use working stress method. So we can directly understand that the question is based on working stress method. So now they have asked the permissible compressive stress. So compressive stress means uh, concrete for concrete. So concrete is good in compression. So it is the f they have asked for compressive stress and they have also given the grade. So our grade is 30. So since it is compression compressive stress and also in bending so bending means what will be my profile be like my profile is going to be a k profile like this so since there isn't many stresses acting at a single point and since there is no stress acting here i i know that my factor of safety is going to be less so my factor of safety is 3 so if i divide 30 by 3 my answer is 10 this is my permissible stress so my answer is option a i want you guys to find the answer if this word was replaced by direct compression you know what is the factor of safety for direct compression so i want you guys to find the answer for direct compression and comment down the answers below thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next video i hope these videos are being very useful i spend a lot of time searching for uh, previous questions and making all these notes so if you find this video useful please do like share and comment down below and share it to your friends also also let me know if this kind of teaching is helping you guys to understand the concept better or where i have to improve also so that i can make the videos better thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next video bye